They appear in the Bible as enigmatic figures, the Canaanites. 4,000 years ago, as pharaohs built the pyramids in Egypt and the first Greek city-states emerged on distant lands, these Canaanites dominated the Levant. From roughly 3,000 to 1,200 BC, their city-states, like Hazer, Megiddo, and the great ports of Tyre and Sidon, dotted the landscape of what is now Lebanon, Israel, Jordan, and parts of Syria. But who were they, really? For all their ways, the Canaanites left a big gap. Very few written records of their own remain. Unlike the piles of clay writings from Mesopotamia or paper scrolls from Egypt and the animal skin parchments of the Dead Sea Scrolls, their writings were recorded on perishable papyrus and crumbled to dust after a long passage of time. What we have left is a patchwork from others. Egyptian wall paintings showing Canaanite gift bringers in feathered hats, Assyrian records bragging about attacks, and most predominantly, the Bible. The Canaanites were not a monolithic empire, but a mosaic of city-states and tribes scattered across the Levant. Archaeological records paint them as a fusion of indigenous farmers and nomadic herders. But genetically, their traces have always been elusive. To explore more about the Canaanites and check for links to people today, researchers turned to archaeology and ancient DNA. In 1998, French archaeologists started digging up the city of Sidon. It was founded perhaps as early as 4000 BC, during the Chalcolithic period when copper tools first appeared alongside stone. By the Middle Bronze Age, around 2000 BC, Sidon had developed into an important hub with its harbors, alive with cedar ships filled with Tyrian purple dye, timber from Lebanon, and glass beads traded as far as the Nile Delta. But Sidon's true allure lies in its remarkable preservation through millennia. Excavations here have revealed clues to the Canaanites. In the college site, a sprawling urban quarter unearthed amid modern bustle, archaeologists uncovered not just pottery shards and ivory carvings, but the bones of everyday folk, merchants, artisans, and typical families. Among them were five skeletons from the late Middle Bronze Age, dated to roughly 3,700 years ago through radiocarbon and stratigraphic precision. Stratigraphic precision, in this case, means using the layers of earth where the skeletons were found to accurately determine their age. These were no kings or warriors, but ordinary Canaanites, three women and two men, their petrous bones, the dense ear-guarding parts of the skull, preserving the molecules of DNA against the humid Lebanese climate that would otherwise cause the fragile DNA molecules to degrade irretrievably. What followed was DNA extraction. Geneticists at the Wellcome Sanger Institute in England's verdant Cambridgeshire with collaborators performed the extraction and analysis. The process was extremely careful and precise. The team used methods they had perfected over many years of testing to extract and prepare the ancient DNA. The DNA was then sequenced using a powerful machine called the Illumina HiSec 2500, which reads billions of tiny DNA fragments, each about 75 letters long. These short pieces were then compared and matched against a modern human reference genome. They also sequenced mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down only from others, and from the two male individuals that the Y chromosome data revealed their paternal haplogroups. In total, they held enough DNA to map out full sets of genes for five ancient Canaanite individuals and, for comparison, full gene maps from 99 people living in Lebanon today. With the results of the analysis out, the process began with a question as old as history itself. Where did the Canaanites come from? The researchers discovered that the Bronze Age Sidon samples sat right between the local Neolithic Levantines and the Chalcolithic Iranians. This meant the Canaanites were a blend of two main ancestral groups, about 48% from early Levantine farmers and 52% from ancient Iranians. The Levantine side of their ancestry came from people who built the world's first farming villages, growing emmer wheat and herding goats at places like Jericho. The Iranian side came from pastoralists who raised animals, mined copper at Tali Iblis, and were part of a wider movement of people spreading east and west across ancient Iran. To find out when these two groups mixed, the team used a genetic technique called linkage disequilibrium decay. In simple terms, it looks at how long chunks of DNA stay together over generations. The results showed that the mixing happened between 6,600 and 3,550 years ago, roughly 4,600 to 1,550 BC. The father line DNA, passed down from fathers to sons and carried on the Y chromosome, told its own part of the story. One man from Sidon had a lineage called J1P58, a genetic family that likely began in the Zagros Mountains of Iran and later spread far across the Middle East. Today, it makes up about 74% of Y chromosomes among the Marsh Arabs of Iraq, showing how this lineage traveled alongside Semitic-speaking peoples as they expanded across the region. The other Sidon man carried J2M12, 
Another major Y chromosome branch that stretched from the Balkans in southeastern Europe all the way to the mountains of India. It's still found in high numbers in places like Albania. Interestingly, both of these J lineages were absent in the Neolithic farmers who lived in the Levant thousands of years earlier. They appeared only later. This suggests that new people arrived from the east, bringing fresh male lineages and blending with the older Levantine communities. The mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA, passed down from mothers to their children also revealed some clues. The individuals from Sidon carried maternal haplogroups such as N1A3A, HV1B1, K1A2, R2, and H1BC, types that are still found in Lebanon and nearby regions today. However, these ancient samples also showed subtle genetic differences. This shows that there was a slight difference in their maternal ancestry compared to modern populations. It's important to understand that the 48 to 52 split, and the haplogroups tell related but slightly different parts of the story. The percentages describe the overall blend of ancestry, like mixing two large populations together. The haplogroups, however, represent the specific lineages carried by specific individuals who took part in that mixing. The researchers also examined 84 specific spots in the DNA linked to physical traits. Based on these, the people of Sidon likely had light to medium skin tones, partly due to a gene called SLC24A5, also common in Europeans. Even the genetic risks we see in the region today were already present back then. Variants linked to lactose intolerance, trouble digesting milk after childhood, were found in their DNA. Now, the researchers turned to the ultimate question. They tested to see if the Canaanites had any genetic relation to modern populations. The researchers used special DNA comparisons called F4 statistics, which measure how much genetic material two groups share. These tests showed that modern Lebanese people share genetic overlap with the Bronze Age people from Sidon. A second analysis, called QPADM, confirmed it. On average, people in Lebanon today get some of their ancestry from Canaanite-like groups. They found that the present-day Lebanese population is largely descended from the ancient Canaanites, inheriting some of their genes from these ancient people, while others came from migrants from Eurasia who moved to the Levant around 3,000 years ago. So, the picture becomes clear. Modern Lebanese are a fusion of the Bronze Age Canaanites, such as the Sidon people, and later Eurasian migrants. The revelations from the five remains of Sidon have altered our understanding of Levantine history. Yet even with this breakthrough, the story of the Canaanites and of the Levant itself is far from complete. Future sequencing projects are already underway across the Levant, aiming to recover DNA from different ages, from the earliest Neolithic farmers to the Iron Age Phoenicians and beyond. And, as technology advances, scientists hope to map thousands of years of genetic continuity in unprecedented detail, tracing how ancient families, cultures, and civilizations evolved, survived, and intertwined. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, you can like, subscribe, and share it with others. And also let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, farewell.